We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up, up. Bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. Hello and welcome one and all to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. And it is... Wembley week. Can we say Wembley week? Because it's like, it's not really Wembley anymore. We had Dynamite in Cardiff. We have Collision coming up in Cardiff too. We have a crazy week in the UK here. I'm so excited. Uh, but look, I, I'm really excited because uh, one, uh, if you're watching the video edition of this, we are in the same place. In the not, same spot. You're not seeing it. He's been AI here. the whole time, but uh, no, no, he's real. Uh, no, I am real. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, we, we are actually here in London. We are just days away days. from the biggest event of the year, AEW All in London, yes. the second edition of All in London, the third edition overall. Um, it's an exciting time. We obviously just announced All in Texas Y'all next in. year. Y'all in. Y'all in. Uh, as yeah, the AEW fan base has <laughs> affectionately dubbed it. This is just a really cool time. And I'm really excited about this show. Last year was a blast. And to actually get to be here a much longer amount of time to to have done Cardiff to dude uh, yes yes like can i just tell a story real quick cuz we're like coming in uh to Heathrow and we're walking down this like hallway trying to get to the hotel and my husband's like oh is this kind of what you did last year i'm like bitch we came from atlanta dynamite last year like we got off the plane did fan events did wembley and then went to chicago <laughs> yeah it, it was such a quick turnaround i don't even i don't think i even had time to like adjust time zones so this one has been really nice because we've gotten a chance to see all of the AEW fan base as they've come in they've gotten to see all the different things like just having dynamite in the uk has been so huge yes. like so incredible and oh my god the fans in wales i've heard so many things and they delivered yes good job guys. yeah good now job. honestly i have been so thrilled about everything that we've got going on including this incredible card look i've been looking forward to all of this for a very very long time Who hasn't been? and you might even say i've been counting down the day <laughs> to the final countdown because title versus career AEW World Championship on the line. Swerve Strickland defends the AEW World Championship against the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. If Brian does not win, this is this is his, last his match. final match. Okay, so at what point do we start crying on this podcast? Because that's kind of how I feel right now. So, so here's the problem with this. Here's the problem. Both of these guys are great. You and I have been very open about our fandom for Brian Danielson. We think he's yes. the greatest wrestler of all time. Greatest However, all time. both of us have also been open about our love for Swerve Strickland. You're biased towards him having been related. Spoilers. But also, like, Swerve and I came up on the indies together. Like, mm -hmm. he's a Washington guy. And he's been a phenomenal champion for AEW. He has been representing this company wonderfully. And he's been doing it even before. Before he got the title. Uh, so franchise player. He's sticking around a very long time. And it's one of those things where we know we've got Swerve for the long haul. Yes. But Brian Danielson, we don't know how much time we have with him. It, this could be it, you know, for everything Brian has talked about and how much, uh, you know, he's physically breaking down <sighs> and how uh, we always knew this was going to be the last year of his career. Uh, we knew for a fact that uh, he, he's talked about how his contract is up. He's yes. working without a contract. Yes. <sighs> We've seen these two go at it once before. It was a match uh, last October, Title Tuesday, sort of Strickland, Brian Danielson. And I remember walking away from that match going, God, that match on a bigger stage. Like they had delivered in that moment. And I remember thinking did. about that match being on a bigger stage and what they could do with a bigger platform. And for these two to be on the biggest stage that AEW has, AEW All In, getting to see Swerve Strickland, who a year ago was on this All In card mm -hmm. um, in a coffin match where he teamed with Christian Cage against Sting and Darby Allen, to see where he went in that year, to see the Dude. trajectory he hit from the feud with Hangman Adam Page oh my God. to going on to Samoa Joe, becoming the AEW World Champion, beating Christian Cage, beating Will Ospreay. It doesn't feel like his train is stopping. No. It doesn't feel like the momentum is slowing down. He's hitting him. the station full speed. Brakes aren't working. Yeah. He's, like, he's still got so much more to go with this run. But at the same time, Brian Danielson is, again, I think he's the greatest wrestler of all time. The greatest. And I think in order for that to be a true statement, it can't end without the AEW World Championship. <sighs> I'm just, I'm sad with the outcome of this, but I'm happy with the outcome of this. There's no way that I can be, there There will be an emotional outcome either way. Yes. It's 
we're we're either going to see Swerve loses his title and we see, you know, a title on the guy who is the greatest uh, wrestler of all time. I mean, it's it's just incredible that thought or we literally see Brian Danielson's last match. I I don't even want to say it. like we know this date has been coming, but it's I'm not ready. Right. I, <laughs> I'm not I am, ready. I am genuinely not ready. No. But at the same time, we we've got a few days to get there and an entire four hour show before that main event hits. But I am so excited for this. I think no matter what, I know it's a cliche thing to say, but I feel like everybody wins for for where we're about to be with Swerve Strickland uh, defending the AEW World Championship against Brian Danielson, title versus career, the final countdown. <sighs> Also, just shout out to the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Right? Pretty cool. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is just cool all around. I am so excited for We're all very uh, excited. Just as a fan, as a friend, all of this. I couldn't be more thrilled for everybody involved. It's yeah. just a really cool thing to see and to see kind of wrestling come to this point just naturally. Like, I, I was talking to someone recently, like, Sting had this phenomenal career, right? And the way he went out was so great. It's hard to make things like that happen in wrestling where you have these great moments as people are on the way out. And I just know that with all of the time that Brian Danielson has spent with AEW, all of it has been excellent. And the things he's done for us on screen, behind the scenes, I really hope this isn't the last one. But if it is, I, I will be so grateful to have had the opportunity to work with him. Yeah, And, and shout out to uh, our, our incredible video team last week dude good riddance holy crap so like the purchase of roh that's why you did that <laughs> right <laughs> being able to see like video clips of young brian danielson come through the curtain and then like hug roderick strong or like you see claudio castagnoli and it's like oh all of these guys are just they know each other there's so much history here and yeah. it was just so absolutely incredible so shout out to our production team because that was an excellent excellent package yes but Title matches continue yes. on this card because the AEW World Tag Team Championship is on the line. The Young Bucks, the EVPs, defend the AEW World Tag Team titles against FTR and the Acclaim oh in a three-way. This is a, this has been an interesting road to get here mm -hmm. because uh, the Acclaim, of course, defeated the Young Bucks in an eliminator it feels like an eternity ago. And, in wrestling, yes. yes <laughs> and they earned what you would call the right to face the Young Bucks. They are the number um, one contenders. Yes. They earned that spot. They earned that spot. And they had their match this past, uh, a week ago. They had a match a week ago. And the Young Bucks won by disqualification, which most would say that's not a satisfying conclusion. Poor Rick Knox. And, uh, and then also on the other side of that, you've got the Young Bucks' greatest rivals, FTR, team that the Young Bucks faced last year in Wembley. They faced them at Dynasty where they won the AEW World Tag Team Championship. FTR is on a mission to once again become AEW World Tag Team Champions. And we also saw the time limit draw on Collision. We did. There's, there's we did. so much at stake here between these three teams. I think the Young Bucks have a lot to prove here. I think when you think about the fact that last year at Wembley, we saw FTR defeat the Young Bucks and cement themselves for what they would call themselves the greatest tag team of all time. We, You and I literally sat here. We had the conversation yep. about uh, who the better team was. But at the end of the day, FTR, they defeated the Young Bucks. Mm -hmm. They were the better team. But then the Acclaimed also had a great night last year. They defeated House of Black. And became along with champions. Billy Gunn, they became the trio's champions. But then you have to look at the Young Bucks. They didn't get their Wembley moment mm -hmm. last year. And so for them, to me, it feels like... In order to make that right and to make all things right in the world, the Young Bucks have to hold on to those World Tag Team titles. But at the same time, you look at the fire the Acclaimed has had lately. This is a team that is not wanting to go down as uh, a team that, you know, they, they've had a lot of great success as a trio. Um, they had great success when they won the Tag Team titles the first time when they beat Swerve in Our Glory. But I think they want to remind people that that wasn't a one-time thing. They weren't a flash in the pan team, that they still have that same fire that they had two years ago, and they are coming back for those World Tag Team titles. But then you have FTR. Oh my FTR God. is ready to become three-time AEW World Tag Team Champions. And how do they do that? They have to defeat either one of these teams, teams that they do have history with, all three of these teams. They, these teams are the example of what the AEW... They're the epitome of tag epitome, team wrestling. There it is. There you they're go. the epitome of what the AEW tag team I division is. I should be the writer. Is. Yes. <laughs> and they, they've, they've spent the last 
five years of AEW. Um, really, the the acclaimed and FTR really came in around the same time in 2020. But time for, is a flat circle. Yes, <laughs> but for the majority of the time in AEW, these have really been the three teams that have been kind of at the forefront. Uh, they are the epitome of the AEW World Tag Team Division, and to get to share the stage together at Wembley is just. We've, uh, you couldn't ask for anything bigger. We've seen them all carry goals. We know they're all capable of being champions, but we literally wouldn't have all in without the Young Bucks. Yeah. So I don't know if that's just sort of because they didn't have their Wembley moment. Maybe that's the chip on their shoulder. I don't know. Like this, this is one of those matches that could honestly go any way. One of three ways. One, one of three. Everyone loves a good three way. All right. So we've got more to talk about here on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up, this card is massive and we've got way, way more to talk about. AEW Unrestricted. It's Aubrey Edwards. Hi. It's Will Washington. Yo. We are talking about All In London. We're talking about this card, this wonderful card, this wonderful nine match card. And there's still so much to go on this show. You know, we just talked about the AEW World Championship. We talked about the World Tag Team titles. But uh, let's go to a different part of the world. A part of the world that, you know, this is a title that used to represent uh, the. Oh, are we going to talk about this shit? Globally. But. But uh, the, the title has definitely uh, shrunken down its its coverage. Right. Um, the former mm-hmm. international championship, uh, now the AEW American championship. It's wrong. It's all kinds of wrong. I'm sorry. I, I can't support this. It's- MJF defending the American <laughs> championship against Will Ospreay. Okay. So here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. There was a point in time where Max came back and we were all very excited to see him. And then he shows his true colors. And we remember that he's actually Maxwell Jacob Friedman. And why were we all tricked all along? Yeah. Of course. Oh, oh yes. He's, he's been very Max since he's been back. He's been very Max since he's been back. But he has this incredible, incredible match with Will Ospreay. Which, of course, because you've got literally one of the faces of AEW from day one, along with Will Ospreay, a future legend. And they're battling it out. How long did they go? 59 minutes, 58 seconds? Yep. Yeah. So even though Max says it was an easy W, we all saw like <laughs> that was a ridiculous match. It was. And to know that that was a match where the title changed hands and then suddenly it became the AEW American title. It's hard because I think in traditional wrestling, like the Americans are supposed to be the good guys and then like boo the other guys. And it feels weird being the other way around. <laughs> But honestly, like, screw America, man. <laughs> We're in the UK. <laughs> I'm all about Will Ospreay on this one. <laughs> uh, so my my feeling here is that he said "Easy W" uh, multiple times over. But I he think, says it with an oxygen tank on him. By the way, I, if I can appeal to the the basketball fans out there, that was really what we like to call a buzzer beater. Mm, um, good reference. And good reference. That being how max got the victory should tell you that that was as close and as competitive of a victory as you can get yep and it was two seconds away from being a draw but here we are now we're entering osprey country oh i'm so excited you know osprey last year had an incredible match with chris jericho oh my god in like his his backyard basically yes he had an incredible moment last year he wasn't even a part of the company and now will osprey is arguably a bigger part of this company, I dare I say it, than Max. I feel like Will Ospreay is just an incredible leader for both our talent, for this company. Like, Max is going to come find me after this. <laughs> but the things that Will you has done... Not me. I know, I know. Let's let's be real here. Do, do not hurt Will Washington. <laughs> this is an Aubrey Edwards stance. <laughs> but I, I honestly feel like Will is just seeing him become who he is as a person, not just as a wrestler. But it, it's one thing to have a guy come in and do a couple matches here and there, but to see him become a part of this company and a part of this roster in the way that he has and how he knows that everything he does reflects on AEW. I, I want to get behind Will on this. I, I, I really do. I, I do think he's been one of the great flag bearers of AEW. Yes. Um, he represents this company so well. And... To get to return to his backyard and have a chance to reclaim the championship that he feels was stolen from him and to restore it to its former glory as the international championship. Yeah, that'd be great. Yes. But we've got other titles we on do. the line. We do. We um, do. Because, <gasps> oh uh, my God. Speaking of people who are entering their backyards. Oh, buddy. Um, oh, buddy. This one's going to be a good one. Okay. Yes. So let's let's just shout out to 
Tony Storm and Mariah May, who have this storyline has just been so absolutely excellent. And to see Tony Storm change from rock and roll Tony Storm to outcast Tony Storm to timeless Tony Storm, at the same time we see her protege Mariah May come in, who, and I hate it because at the very beginning, she told us exactly what was going to happen. She did. She told us she was going to be Tony Storm. And I feel like, I feel so terrible having missed it. We were all so trusting. We saw her come in. We saw her grow. We saw her become this amazing wrestler. She became a part of our locker room. And then she just beat Tony Storm's head in with a shoe. And I have never gone from loving someone to hating someone so quickly <laughs> that I have Mariah May. Oh, man. And I think both of these women are excellent competitors. There is something, something else that comes out in someone when there's gold on the line. We know that Tony Storm has defended this title on multiple instances in pay-per-view settings. She faced Deanna Prazo. She faced Thunder Rosa. She faced multiple competitors to retain this title time and time again. And we see Mariah May literally doing the thing that she said she was going to do this whole time. I don't know if there's anything that can face her. No. And I think that, you know, she has proven that she was going to do anything to take Tony Storm's spot. She's quite literally out for blood. And now we're here and we're entering Mariah May's backyard. Mm. Um, but the difference is Mariah is relatively unknown to our audience. Even as the audience thought they were getting to know Mariah May, it turns out they didn't know Mariah May at all. None of us know <laughs> Mariah May, apparently. <laughs> and so <laughs> I think that makes this a very, very fascinating scenario because... I think even with all of that said, Tony Storm is still going to have the fans behind her. Oh, 100%. And I think that I think the fans are going to want to see Tony Storm retain her AEW Women's World Championship. There's a lot of momentum that can drive Tony to kind of putting Mariah back in her place and uh, reminding the fans that even with everything Mariah concocted in winning the Owen Hart, turning her back on Tony Storm and effectively murdering Luther. Oh, buddy. We, Get well soon, man. <laughs> even with all of that, I think Tony Storm has a chance to remind Mariah that she's still got a long way to go and she will still be the AEW Women's World Champion. Like That's one of the beauties of wrestling, right? Is you have people who the fans get behind and they say, this is our champion. And we have seen that with Timeless Tony Storm. The fans are so behind her that even though we are entering Mariah's home country, everyone's behind Tony. We're all behind Tony. I the, like This is going to be one of those matches where it's going to be excellent. Regardless of the outcome, I'm hoping Tony retains, I'm just saying. But regardless of the outcome, I think it's going to be an incredible match. And I could not be more proud of both of these women for all of the things that they have done. Independent of who I like and who I dislike, I give credit where it's due. Both of them have come a very, very long way and have done amazing things for AEW. I'm Absolutely. so happy. Well, we've been talking about all kinds of title matches on this card so far, literally only title matches, but one of the ones that I'm most excited about is we've got Jack Perry versus Darby Allen for the TNT Championship in a coffin match. And we saw Jack Perry come out in collision with this brand new blood-painted, pewter-coated title. Shout out Jack Perry, that yeah. video he posted. Had no <laughs> idea he was a metalsmith, but goddamn. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty very cool. cool. I was like, you're going to put all other arts and crafts to shame, buddy. Like, <laughs> pretty dope. You kind of have to retain this now, right? <laughs> but at the same time, we see he's challenging Darby to a coffin match. Has Darby ever lost a coffin match? Darby has not lost a coffin match. Uh, we talked about this last year. Right. Uh, and we talked about that, it, you know, Swerve and, and Christian could be the ones to finally beat him. And nope. they weren't. Didn't happen. Uh, and now here we are, Darby Allen versus Jack Perry. This is Darby Allen's match. But then when you think about the TNT Championship, it's also Darby Allen's title, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a belt that Darby Allen defended night in, night out as he had it during the pandemic oh when God. he won it after the pandemic. He had like he nine title defenses in a row. It was wild. Yeah. Darby Allen really made that belt special and he made it his. And I think that Darby is out to prove that one more time. I think the one difference here is that Darby never had anyone light him on fire. Yeah. And yeah, that, that'll kind of kind of light a fire under your ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, <laughs> quite literally. <laughs> and and knowing that Jack Perry has been lit on fire, um, that is something I could very much see. Things you only say in wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could very much see that being the catalyst to um, Jack Perry possibly retaining this championship. But I don't know, man. Darby Allen. It, it's been again the the TNT title is such an important part of who Darby Allen is. This one could go either way, but I, I think this is Darby's to to take home. I, I think it's too hard to call. I think Jack's got a lot to prove. He wants to be the guy that actually puts Darby in a coffin. Why else would you make the statement knowing the the stats that we do? But Darby is relentless. He will literally do anything necessary to make sure that he wins his matches. So this is this is going to be a really interesting one to watch. There's still so we barely even touched all of the card on this one and we've got so much more to talk about here on AEW Unrestricted. We'd re-return from our quick commercial break. AEW Unrestricted. It's Aubrey and Will, and we're talking about All in London. And don't forget, you can check out All in London on pay per view, all of your favorite platforms. It's available on. You can check us out on Triller, um, which actually has a great deal on uh, All in. You can get the package that it also includes All Out. <gasps> um, and so definitely check that out. You yes. can also check us out on Bleacher Report Hell yeah. um, and follow AEW socials for all other platforms we're available on. Um, you can also be there in person. You yes. want to be there. Yes. Uh, Wembley Stadium is such an experience. If you haven't had the opportunity to check out Wembley Stadium, this is the time to do so. It's insane. I still remember walking into the building and crying last year. It's just such a phenomenal thing. And to be a part of that huge of a show, knowing we're not going to be at Wembley next year. We're going to be in Texas, y'all. So, I mean, if, if you're on the fence, this is the time to do it. AEWTix.com. Yes, AEWTix.com. Get All right. your tickets. But let's talk about it. We've got the TBS Championship on the line. Mercedes Monet, the reigning and defending TBS champion, is going to be defending the title against the returning Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. We saw Dr. Britt Baker return at Forbidden Door just a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. And here we are now, two months later, she finally gets her hands on Mercedes Monet. Uh, Mercedes not alone anymore. Though. No. Mercedes introduced the AEW audience to Camille. The Brick House. The Brick House. And you have to think, given how she has been a factor in uh, Mercedes just recently retaining the title over the three-time AEW Women's World Champion Hikaru Shida and just knowing that, you know, Britt Baker, one of the longest reigning AEW Women's World Champions of all time and somebody who's looking to be the first person to capture both the world title and the TBS championship. Mm -hmm. Camille's got to be somebody that she's looking out for. I mean, she's got to be looking out for her because she took that boot to the face. Yeah. Oh, Lordy. That was... Camille is scary because she's strong. She's silent. You have no idea how deadly she is. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we've seen Mercedes wrestle on AEW television multiple times. We've seen her defend the TBS title. She, We knew before she even came in, she was a phenomenal wrestler. Mercedes Monet has punched holes in the ceiling of women's wrestling and is a complete, complete and utter legend. And she's still so early in her career. But we've seen Britt Baker be here since day one. She was at the original All In. She's been here. She is, as she says, the face of the women's division. I mean, this is actually a pretty, in my opinion, even though Britt's had some time off, I feel like this is a pretty equal match. Yes, it, 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 it can be in a lot of senses. One of the things Mercedes said a few weeks ago when she pointed out, she said that Britt Baker is... The first, in a lot of respects, she was the first woman signed to AEW. She was the first woman to main event AEW television, and she's done it on multiple occasions. Yep. And she said, you are the first, but you're not the best. Mm. Uh, and Mercedes can make the argument for being one of the best. Absolutely. To note that she has all of those accolades that Mercedes Monet, you know, we didn't even talk about the fact that she's the New Japan Strong Women's Champion as well. That is a belt. Mercedes she's two also, belts. Yep, she's carrying around two belts at the moment. And to know that Mercedes is as good as she is, and she went ahead and got herself an, an insurance policy in Camille, I think to Smart. me, that is going to keep those championships on Mercedes Monet for a very long time. That's just a CEO doing good business. That's what CEOs do. That's what CEOs do. Oh, man. Yeah, no, this is, this is going to be a great one. I mean, CEO, CEO. Watch our yeah. shitty dancing on the YouTube version of this. Sorry. Look, 
Uh, this is what we do. This is what we do. It's been a very long week. Uh, we're finally acclimated to the time zone, and then we'll quickly switch back as we start heading towards <laughs> back to the U.S. <laughs> we have multiple incredible women's matches on this card, and we'll get to uh, one more coming up a little bit. But we've got Jericho and Hook, the FTW title. Hook is back. He is missing an eyeball, or he's, he's blind. He's he's hurt from this fireball that he took from Jericho, right? And Jericho is giving him the option, all right, you can challenge me for the FTW title, but if I win, you never get to challenge for it again as long as Chris Jericho, the learning tree, is champion. And I think it's an interesting stipulation. Like, we saw Hook win the title back again last year. He took the title off of Jack Perry at the zero hour. He did. So th- this is this is territory that Hook is familiar with. Yeah, it, it is. Um, you know, Hook has been the challenger for the FCW title on multiple occasions. And he's looking to win that championship back for a third time, which is just insane to think about how a title that was created by Taz and associated so long with Taz is now a belt that Hook's looking to win for the third time. I completely forget that it's a Taz belt. Yeah, I mean... It, it's, it's just, To me, it's synonymous with Hook. Yeah, it, it literally says Taz on the belt. Um, but, <laughs> but, like but, they're related? What? <laughs> but but the thing is, uh, Chris Jericho is, of course, you know, he's turned it into the For the World Championship. He'll tell you how many days he's been champion. <laughs> yep, he's got the Tron doing it for us. He's got Love the video it. wall. It, it Love it. You. But yeah, uh, Hook is... He's looking to put the learning tree behind him. And I think in order to do that... He's got to walk away with the victory. Mm-hmm. Um, if not, no matter what, the learning tree is behind him. Uh, and how, how does he he pull that off? But at the same time, Chris Jericho isn't ever alone. He's got the bad apple, Brian Keith. Oof. He's got big redwood, big bill. Oof. God, it's so good. Who, who knows? Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Hook. This is going to be a great match at Wembley. <laughs> hey, let's talk a little bit about this casino gauntlet match. Yes. Because uh, it gives you a guaranteed world title shot in the future. Yes, at any point. At any and, point. At any point. Ooh. And think about the previous casino gauntlet matches. We, we first saw this match on the April 24th edition of AEW Dynamite. It was won by Will Ospreay. Mm. Um, and it guaranteed him a shot at the international championship. Which he won off of Rod- Roderick Strong. Which he won off of Roderick Strong. There but then we go. saw the match a second time at the Forum. It was also won by Will Ospreay. And that guaranteed him a shot uh, at Swerve Strickland, which he was not successful at. Nope. Uh, when Great it. match. But, but thinking about the fact that now we've got the Casino Gauntlet, I assume, without Will Ospreay. Because he's kind of tied up with MJF at the moment. A little bit. Uh, he's kind of busy on the show already. <laughs> and so it's, it's a match that he has definitely perfected. But at the same time now, we've got this completely open field. We know Orange Cassidy is going to be opening the match. As, we, as you know, the rules of the match are that every few minutes a competitor enters until the first fall is scored. Which it means- could end as soon as the second guy comes out. Yes. That's one uh, of the things I love about this match, right? Is that It could literally end. That that is you the don't advantage even know of being in it. that's <laughs> the advantage of being in it first. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, that first advantage can turn into a disadvantage because the longer it goes on, oh, the longer you've been in the match. You're tired, and so you you want to end it as quickly as possible. At the same time, we could see any number of names enter this match because the match keeps adding participants until a fall has been scored. We could end up seeing a hundred people into this match if nobody scores a fall. And oh. And that uh, it's one of my favorite matches that we do in AEW. It's one of the greatest creations. I think I've told Tony this multiple times. It's one of the greatest things that we've added to the AEW repertoire of matches. And the last one at the forum, I thought was just, I'd call it an A. And this one here feels like with the potential of being an A plus, um, being on as big of a stage as it's going to be. And knowing the the potential talent that could enter, this is going to be a really exciting one. There's so many opportunities for some cool stuff here. I'm really excited for this. Wrestling is all about surprises and things happening when you least expect them. And this match kind of puts all of that on a silver platter. Right. It's it's so good. It's so wonderful. Speaking of good and wonderful, I want to talk about Willow Nightingale. I want to talk about how she's teaming <laughs> with Tomohiro Ishii and she's facing Chris Statlander at Stokely Hathaway in a mixed tag match on the zero hour. I am so stoked about this because who doesn't love Willow? Willow is great. She's and, amazing. And also uh, who doesn't <laughs> who likes Stokely? Nobody. <laughs> uh, but but the fact that she has <laughs> no comment there. I'm not okay. gonna play any favorites That's fine. That's here. Fine. But I but I will say it was it was quite crafty of her to to team up with her her fellow conglomeration mate in uh Big Tom. And 
uh, knowing that 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 Stokely, knowing that Stokely is going to be stepping into an AEW ring oh, again. By the way, because you know we talked about Hook before, and that Stokely had the way at one point. Did face off with Hook. Do you remember when he lost last time? He had to walk down the hall and all of us were laughing at him. Yeah. It was one of my favorite days of work ever. <laughs> <laughs> and, but here on his side, though, That's, is, is the very dangerous Fair. Chris Statlander. Chris Statlander is ultimately the X factor here mm-hmm. because Chris Statlander, there's very few people you could put her against and I wouldn't bet on Chris Statlander. Yeah, oh, 100%. And knowing that at the very least, if this were Stokely on his own, done deal. I'd probably bet my house. But uh, Same. knowing that uh, he's got Chris Statlander by his side, she's more than a woman. She is one of the greatest AEW women's wrestlers of all time. And she's been out to prove a lot ever since uh, Double or Nothing. And here she is with the opportunity to, uh, before going one on one with Willow Nightingale at All Out she gets a chance to make a statement because there is something on the line here. Yes. This match has a stipulation. Yes. You know, if Willow and big Tom win, then they get to choose the stipulation for the match at all out between Willow and Chris Statlander. And if Stokely and Chris Statlander get the victory, they get to choose the stipulation. So there's a lot at stake here. You know, I always love seeing Willow and Chris Statlander go at it. I think their matches get better with every single time and they get more intense, more hated, more heat. I've been very happy watching these two go at it. Um, They're a pair that when they broke up, I was very heartbroken because I loved seeing them together. Mm -hmm. But when both of them are in the ring, whether they're teaming together or facing each other, everybody wins because the two of them are phenomenal competitors and they have so much fire in them. And they're two and two. So knowing really? that, yeah. So knowing that they uh, they very much have a score to settle with each other. Yeah. Um, this is going to be really exciting. I'm very I, excited for this. I'm I'm excited for this whole card. I, I I mean, just going through all of this earlier when we were running through our notes, I have no idea what match I'm most excited about. I'd say Swerve and Brian just because of the emotional factor. But honestly, each one of these is going to tell a phenomenal story. We're going to see all of these amazing competitors, whether they've been with AEW since the beginning or whether they've joined AEW sometime in the last five years. Everyone's going to have this awesome Wembley moment. And I could not be more proud of us as a company for pulling this off again how the hell we we do these pay-per-views every freaking few weeks, <laughs> but they're always better than the last one. Definitely tune in. If you're here in the UK or if you can get to the UK, AEWTix.com, you definitely want to be there live at Wembley Stadium this Sunday. Please be there. If you can be there, you can watch it multiple different ways. You can watch it on traditional pay-per-view. You can watch it on Bleach Report. You can watch it on Triller TV. Follow AEW on all the social media accounts because we will sure tell you exactly all of the places you can watch it. You can watch Dynamite on TBS on Wednesdays. You can watch Rampage on TNT on Fridays. You can watch Collision on TNT on Saturdays. And of course, you can watch Ring of Honor, Honor Club Thursdays. I am Aubrey Edwards here in person with Will Washington. Thank you for listening to AEW Unrestricted. We'll see you at Wembley, bitches. Come on, throw your hands up. Let me see you. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gonna turn it up. Make them bounce now Blousing like they bossing And the freaks are coming out